Hi, welcome to that the lecture on that lean and hungry look. This one is written by Susan Britt Jordan. Um, this was written after she got married. Um, this is by the same author as Neat People versus Sloppy People that we we have already covered. Um, this one's a little different. You know, the same sort of concept, right? She's got a very humorous piece. Um, she, her two subjects for this are thin people and fat people, and she sets this one up a little different, than, differently than she did the previous reading. This one also is more of a contrast essay, because she's not really talking about similarities. She's mainly looking at those contrasts between, um, thin people and fat people. But this one is organized in the alternating or point-by-point point format or method. Now, she's got um, a more, uh, more lengthy introduction. So, let's start off talking about content and purpose, and then we'll look at the structure, um, that alternating method. So, look at the attention getter for this one. Again, we've got a longer intro paragraph. Um, she starts off, Caesar was right. Thin people need watching. Now, those two sentences alone grab our attention because the Caesar she's referring to is Julius Caesar, um, the guy who in Roman history was, you know, he had um, knocked out, he was, he was part of what's called a triumvirate where there were three rulers and that was to keep everything fair and balanced. But he decided that he was so powerful and awesome that he killed, had the other two killed. So he became the ultimate dictator. And his closest friends and other countrymen, members of the Senate in Rome, um, decided that he needed to be taken down because he was getting way too powerful. So they stabbed him in the back, literally, one day. So... To start off with Caesar was right, that grabs the attention for anybody that gets that reference. And then the next sentence, that ten thin people need watching. We as readers are wondering, what? What do you mean thin people need to be watched? So it makes us want to read. So look at the rest of this paragraph. I've been watching them for most of my adult life, and I don't like what I see. When these narrow fellows spring at me, I quiver to my toes. Thin people come in all personalities, most of them menacing. You've got your together thin person, your mechanical thin person, your condescending thin person, your tisk tisk thin person, your efficiency expert thin person. All of them are dangerous. So there's the thesis statement that all thin people are dangerous. And notice she does that same thing she did to us in the previous reading. If you're a thin person, you are taking offense at this point. You're, you're becoming very defensive. You're like, what do you mean? I'm not dangerous. If you are not the thinnest person that you want to be, then you're kind of going, huh, it's pretty funny because rarely do we see thin people attacked. What does society, um, what is the image society portrays of how you should be thin? That's why they take those models on the, the covers of magazines and airbrush them to look even thinner um, and have very unrealistic features. It's because it fits the image. All right, so there's the thesis statement. Then we immediately go into the body of the paper where we start, start to have this alternating um, between thin people and fat people based on a particular point. In the first place, thin people aren't fun. So this paragraph is about fun, all right? And they talk about why thin people are not fun. And then they she shifts to fat people um, who never say anything like there aren't enough hours in the day. They think the day is too damn long already, all right? Um, then she starts talking about thin people and fat people in reference to um, their energy level. Um, then you have the issue of um, fat people being thought of as jolly, right? Versus thin people who are thought of as surly or mean. So 
you see, and I've circled fat people in, you know, circled them, and thin people I've underlined, okay? So you can see that alternating, especially in this longer paragraph, they go back and forth a couple times between thin people and fat people. Um, there's a section on reasoning and logic. Thin people believe in logic. Fat people see all sides. Um, fat people um, are seen as rounded blobs, usually gray, always nebulous, and truly not worth worrying about. But the thin person persists, right? Fat people always grin when they hear statements like that. So you see throughout most of this essay, a point is um, presented. And then there's that discussion about thin people and fat people based on that point. Another point's presented. There's that alternating between fat people and thin people in relation to that point. So this is truly that alternating or point-by-point -point method. Let's take a look at the second page. All right, so again, here um, in this paragraph or this section of the paper, activities are addressed. What sorts of things do fat people and thin people like to do? And so you see fat person, thin person, thin person, fat person. So nice job of alternating back and forth in reference to activities. The concept of happiness is addressed, okay? Um, and then look at how she ends this one. Um, what you want when you're down is soft and jiggly, not muscled and stable. Fat people know this. Fat people have plenty of room. Fat people will take you in. And that's how she ends this. But also, there is a, there is a bottom note. And here is a line from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar play in which Caesar says, Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men, and such as sleep a nights. Yond Cassius, who is one of the people that knifes him in the back, has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. So you can see where she got her title, that lean and hungry look, and you can see where she got that thesis statement where she talked about, um, you know, thin people are dangerous, right? All right, now, remember what we know about, and I'm trying to go back to page one. Remember what we know about the alternating point-by-point -point method. Remember that you, have, you establish a point that you're using for the contrast or comparison, in this case it's contrast, between the two subjects, thin people and fat people. You talk about thin people and fat people in reference to this one point before moving into a new point. And then you talk about that point in reference to fat people and thin people. The next point, fat people, thin people. All right. Now, the last thing for us really to talk about is um, what is her purpose in writing this? Well, it's a lot like the previous reading. It's a lot like neat people and um, sloppy people. It's about creating this situation in which you're saying the opposite of what people normally say. Um, normally, thin people are the favored people in society versus fat people. And this one, she's laying out that case for why fat people should be considered the best of the two um, and are misunderstood. Again, with that global, universal kind of message about society has no right to dictate to us what is best, that everybody's different and not just like not all thin people are dangerous or angry or neurotic or whatever, all fat people aren't slobs and lazy and this and that, okay? So again, the universal idea that just be you and that's okay and that we need to quit gauging ourselves based on what society says is the norm for this time. There's an interesting fact, and, and most of you have heard this before, but there's this interesting fact that if you were to look at um, the cover of a magazine back in the 40s and 50s and see what the idea of beauty was at that point and compare that with modern day models on the covers of magazines, 
it's there's a very big difference. So many people would have been considered perfect and ideal in the 30s or 40s or 50s with their body type and shape. And but now they would be considered fat or they would be considered not beautiful based on today's standards. So there's a lot to be said and there have been a lot of essays written about um, body image and about what society does to us if we allow it to happen. Um, you know, before, before COVID-19, um, a lot of people didn't think it was okay to go out in public without your hair looking just awesome and your makeup done. Um, COVID-19 hit and you were hard pressed to get a haircut and you were going to wear a mask anyway. Um, and you weren't really going to get to see anybody except from your car. So a lot of people said, you know what? Here's me without makeup. Here's me without um, my hair cut and styled. It gave us the, the opportunity to say, um, okay, finally it's okay for me to just be me and that to be okay. So some interesting things, I think, from these from Susan Britt Jordan. Um, uh, and note, you know, big important point, this is a contrast essay. Um, she still has that intro and thesis statement. She still has a conclusion, even though it is implied and you have to kind of think about it. It's in that alternating point by point method. Um, but in both of these essays, okay, she could have taken this essay and restructured it and still had points like fun and reasoning and logic. Um, and still had the same two subjects, thin people and fat people. She just would have organized it differently. The points are always the same. The subjects are the same. The difference is how that body paragraph, how those body paragraphs are organized. Are they organized in a big block where you talk about one subject and those three points in reference to that subject before you go to the next block and talk about the next subject in reference to those same three points? Or... Do you set it up in alternating point by point method where you talk about one point at a time and you talk about each of those subjects alternating back and forth if necessary, but you completely talk about that one point in reference to both subjects before moving on to the next one and doing the same thing. All right, that concludes our short lecture on that lean and hungry look. Thank you for joining me.